Hi all, in this video we are going to see about yet another part of vestibular apparatus which is otolith organs. So otolith organs again can be asked as a short note. So we will see how to approach this question. So first we, in the introduction you can write about the basic information about vestibular apparatus. So we know that it is present in the petrous part of temporal bone and it comprises of the bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. Membranous labyrinth consists of the utricle and sacule, which are the otolith organs, as well as the semicircular canals. So, in this video, we will talk about utricle and sacule, which are the otolith organs. So, now we can draw a diagram showing the vestibular apparatus. So, as I said before, it consists of semicircular canals as well as utricle and sacule. So, first we can draw the three semicircular canals, which are the anterior semicircular canals, posterior semicircular canals, as well as the lateral semicircular canals. Do remember to draw the ampulla at the end of each semicircular canal. And then these semicircular canals open into a sac like structure, which is called the utricle. And the utricle in turn ends to into the endolymphatic sac. Now, below the utricle, we've got the saccule, which is a globular sac like structure, and this in turn is connected to the cochlea, which is the organ for hearing. So, this is the basic diagram showing the vestibular apparatus. So, now we'll see about each. So, first of all, utricle. So, we know that utricle is a large vestibular sac which is connected to the semicircular canals. And it is also connected to the saccule via ductus utriculosacularis. So it is a duct which connects the utricle and saccule, which is not shown in this diagram. And it ends in the endolymphatic sac. So this is the endolymphatic sac. What about saccule? Saccule is a globular sac which is linked to the utricle through, through the ductus utriculosacularis. And it is also connected to the cochlea. You can see that it is connected to the cochlea via the ductus reunion. Okay. So now we can see that in this picture it is clearly seen that we've got a structure present inside the utricle and saccule and that is called the macula. So the sensor organ present in the semicircular canals is this which is called the crista ampullaris whereas the sensor organ for utricle and saccule is the macula. So we'll see more about the macula. So first we'll see about the structure. So the macula consists of hair cells as well as supporting cells. So these are the supporting cells. And then we've got the macula, uh, the hair cells, which are basically these cells here. We can we can draw the cilia. You can see that this is the stereo uh, kinocilia, which is the major cilia there. And then we've got the kinocilia. So you can draw the hair cells, which are the receptors for utricle and saccule. And on top of this, there is a gelatinous layer. So we can see that the hair cells are actually embedded onto this gelatinous layer. Okay. And on top of the gelatinous layer, we've got the otolith, which are basically calcium carbonate crystals, which is going to detect the direction of motion. So whenever there's a change in the position of the head we, or the body, we can see that the otolith will move because of the inertia. So what will happen? This gelatinous layer is going to move. So the hair cells are going to move. And when the hair cells move, these the, the cells are going to get depolarized. And that impulses will be transmitted via the nerve fiber which is innervating these hair cells. So see this is the structure of the macula. So basically uh, it's a neuroepithelium formed by hair cells. There are supporting cells that surround the hair cells and then we've got the otolith membrane which is the flat gelatinous layer covering the hair cell and it contains calcium carbonate crystals which are also called otoconia. And because they've got an increased specific gravity compared to the endolymph, they will move when the body moves. The hair cells project into this gelatinous membrane. So that is the structure of the macula. Now we'll see more about the hair cell. How does the hair cell get depolarized? So the receptors for utricle and cycle, as I said, is the hair cell. So they are basically slowly adapting mechanoreceptors. So when you are looking at the structure of the hair cell, we can see that something like this. So basically we've got this this is the cylindrical type of hair cell. In fact, there are two types of hair cells. One is a flask shape and other is a cylindrical. So this is the cylindrical hair cell showing a cuticular plate. And on top of that, we've got this major cilia, which is called the kinocilia. And then we've got the stereocilia. And they're connected to each other via filamentous attachment, which are called the tiplings. Okay. And they are innervated by the nerve fiber. 
and at this point you can also write about the mechanism of action of this how do they get depolarized i've explained it clearly in another video of semicircular canals if you have any doubts you can go check that also i'll just briefly sum it up here so see when the kinocilia moves to one direction the stereocilia also moves towards the kinocilia now on top of the kinocilia we've got potassium channels and they're linked to each other by means of tip links so when the stereocilia move towards the kinocilia the potassium channels open and this will cause influx of potassium which lead to depolarization of the cell and when the cell is depolarized the calcium channels open up which in turn lead to release of neurotransmitter which thereby send impulses to this nerve fiber so that is how the hair cell get depolarized now if the direction is opposite there will be hyperpolarization so that is how the hair cells can detect it will convert that mechanical signal into a neural signal so how do the receptors of utricle and sac will get activated so the receptors of autolith organs are stimulated by linear acceleration like if you're moving forward in a car or moving down in a lift the utricle and sac will be activated and it also uh, get changed when the head position is changed relative to force of gravity suppose you tilt your body in that case also with that's a change in head position that will be detected by the otolith organs so that is how so whenever there's a linear acceleration or change in position of the head the otolith organs get activated so now we'll see how what how is the functioning of the utricle so see inside the utricle the macula is directed horizontally means just like this which means the cilia is in the vertical plane see the cilia is all upwards no so cilia is in the vertical plane so that is how it detects horizontally directed linear acceleration so when when we are in a car suppose we are in a car so what will happen the macula is moving so if we are moving horizontally so that will be detected by the macula present in the utricle okay so because the otolith membrane has got more specific gravity it lags behind due to inertia the cilia bends and that will cause excitation the opposite will occur when the direction is changed so see that is how linear acceleration can be detected by the utricle because the macula is horizontal so what about saccule in saccule the macula is directed vertically see it is like this which means the cilia is in the horizontal plane okay so this can detect vertically directed linear acceleration suppose we are moving up or we are moving down then there will be a change in this gelatinous layer the otolith layer so there will be depolarization or hyperpolarization based on the direction so otolith membrane here also because it is more specific gravity it lags behind due to inertia so suppose i am moving upwards but what will happen to the otolith membrane that will move that will remain downwards because it is more specific gravity and it will have inertia so there will be movement of the hair cell which will cause depolarization so that is how the macula uh, the macula of utricle and saccule work okay and now we'll study about the functions of otolith organs so what are the different functions of the otolith organs so the macula in utricle and saccule detects the position of head with respect to the gravity and helps in maintaining static equilibrium so see this is this point we have we had mentioned before that the macula gets activated whenever there's a change in position of the head as well as when there is a change in the linear acceleration okay so that is why it because it help detects the position of the head it is help it is useful in maintaining the static equilibrium see semicircular canals are for dynamic equilibrium utricle and sac is for static equilibrium and macula also helps in det detecting the linear acceleration and one point here is that they do not get stimulated if the person is running at a constant speed but is stimulated when the speed increases or decreases so that is why runners athletes before they start a running race they lean forward a bit why because when they are going to suddenly start running there will be a change in the position of the otolith organs which can cause them to fall backwards so that is why they lean forward so that it is an, they attacks as an advantage but then once the running race begins and once they attain a uniform speed they do not do not have to run you know uh, lean forward because they can hold it in the erect position because utricle and saccule will not be stimulated when they are running at a constant speed okay so that is a, uh, a minute point there so that will complete the otolith organs and we can just finish it off by uh, mentioning an applied aspect which is the menias disease what is menias disease 
Meniere's disease is the condition which the patient uh, have symptoms like vertigo, tinnitus, fluctuating hearing loss, ear pressure, or pain lasting for hours. And the reason is that inside the inner ear, there is a fluid imbalance and membrane rupture. Which is causing an endolymph perilymph mixing. So basically, that whole vestibular apparatus is filled with endolymph. So because of that, the person will have vertigo, tinnitus, fluctuating hearing loss, etc. So basically, there is an excess of fluid in both semicircular canals and utricular and sacral, which is causing Meniere's disease. So how do we control that? So for management, you can ask them uh, to have dietary modifications like low salt or uh, caffeine free. Ask them to avoid coffee, avoid alcohol. Or you can give medications like diuretics so that it will reduce the fluid retention. Basically, we want that extra fluid out of the ear. So that is how we manage Meniere's disease. So thus, for otol uh, we've covered almost all the important points. So to summarize, when I uh, answer briefly question on otol organs are asked, we can start with the functional anatomy maybe draw the diagram then you can write about the sense organ and it's a max macula and draw the diagram which is which i think is very important drawing this diagram of macula and then you can mention about the receptors that they are hair cells and their mechanism of action and then uh, you can write of how the utricle and saccule function the mechanism of action of utricle and saccule and on what how do they get activated uh, then write about the functions of utricle and saccule and finish it off with an applied aspect so now I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.